This is the East Line Board of Selectmen, regular meeting of May 1st, 2024. Um, we'll rise and present the pledge. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so let's see. Um, we do have some additional uh, agenda items uh, tonight. Do I hear a motion? Yep, I move to add an agenda item 2G, special appropriation for $3,104.81 for ACO uniforms. Okay, do I hear a second? I'll second. All right. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, we'll add that to the agenda. I'd also like to move to add an agenda item 2H, special appropriation in the amount of $15,000 for Brookside Farm Homegrown National Park Grant. Okay, do I hear a second? I'll second. Thank you, Candace. All right, any discussion? If there's none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? None opposed, so the motion carries. Thank you. Next on our agenda, then, would be approval of the minutes. Are we, wait, do we have any delegations? I'm sorry, I jumped over uh, delegations. Do we have any delegations tonight that wish to speak? Being none, then we will move on to the approval of the minutes. Move to approve the regular meeting minutes of April 17, 2024, as submitted. Do I hear a second? Second. Uh, Jason. Seconds. Thank you. Any discussion on the minutes? All right, no discussion. Uh, all in favor of approving the minutes, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain. We have one abstention. We have two abstentions. Two. We have two. So we have two abstentions, okay, and four ayes, right? Okay. Four zero. So the motion carries. All right, next on the agenda is the consent calendar. Do I hear a motion? Move to approve the consent calendar for May 1st, 2024 in the amount of $170.03. Do I hear uh, a, a second? i second that. Thank you. All right, uh, any discussion? Being done, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. So now we will uh, we will turn to new business, and uh, first on the agenda for new business is a capital improvement plan presentation. Uh, my name is Scott Gelbo, and I've been the finance intern here for a little bit. Um, about a little bit about me, I graduated East Lime High School in 2020. Currently studying finance and business analytics at Eastern Connecticut State University, and I'm expected to graduate in May 2024. Um, and I was tasked with researching capital improvement programs. Uh, foundation of capital improvement. Capital improvement planning is the process of identifying, prioritizing, and budgeting for infrastructure projects and long-term investments to enhance community facilities, services, and economic development. A little history of the capital improvement committee within these time. There was previously a capital improvement plan overseen by a subcommittee of unelected members um, and multiple department heads would often attend the meetings. And the goal is to establish an official capital improvement committee, including policies, multi-year plan, and a master plan. Um, some of the GFOA best practices um, that they recommend are that capital planning should contain the following components, an identification of needs, to, uh, determine financial impacts, prioritization of capital requests, including legal requirements, health and safety, service, and asset preservation, and a comprehensive financial plan. GFOA is what exactly? Do you know? G Government Finance Officers Association. Got it. Some of their 
capital planning policies that they recommend is assure or helps to assure sustainability of infrastructure by establishing a process for addressing maintenance, replacement, and proper fixed asset accounting over the full life of capital assets. Also strengthens a government's borrowing position by demonstrating sound fiscal management and showing the jurisdiction's commitment to, man to maximizing benefit to the public with its resource constraints. GFOA recommends that governments develop and adapt and adopt capital planning policies. Some more, uh, more of the, like, detailed planning policies that they recommend uh, include the description of organizations' approach to capital planning and how stakeholder departments will collaborate, a clear definition of what constitutes a capital improvement project, an establishment and identification of members in capital improvement review committee, describes the role of the public and other stakeholders in the process, identifies how decisions will be made with a structured process for prioritizing needs and allocating limited resources, and provides an assessment of government's fiscal capability so a plan is realistic and not a wish list of unfunded needs. Some more policies they recommend are procedure for accumulating necessary capital reserves for both new and replacement purchases, policies linking funding strategies to the useful life of the asset, including when debt can be issued, requirement that multi-year capital improvement plan be developed, ensure that capital project funding is consistent with legal requirements regarding funding, requirement that plan includes significant capital maintenance projects, and provisions for monitoring oversight of the CIP program. For multi-year planning, there is state that a properly prepared capital plan is essential to the future financial health of the organization and continued delivery of services to citizens and businesses. They say that uh, capital improvement plans should identify needs, determine financial impacts, prioritize capital requests, develop a comprehensive financial plan, as well as integrating environment, social, and governance, ESG. The master plan, GFOA recommends that government should consider multiple important elements of master plans during its capital improvement planning. Master plans should provide a vision for capital project plans and investments. Capital project investment decisions should align with government's long range master plan. And finance officers should play an active role in the early planning process by considering financial implications during the development phase of the master plan. Financial factors should also be considered in the development of the master plan. So, overall, the recommendations that GFOA has. My research has concluded is uh, to establish a capital improvement plan, including components that identify needs, prioritize capital requests, and involve a comprehensive financial plan, as well as policies with an organizational approach, a definition of the roles of the public, stakeholders, and the review committee, as well as multi year planning and monitoring. More recommendations for the importance and integration of the plan. The importance of capital planning is to identify needs, prioritize, and financial planning, as well as ESG integration and for master plans. It's a vision for projects and investments supported by realistic documents and policies aligned with long-term goals, active financial officer involvement, and considered financial education. ESG is what? Uh, environmental social governance. So like uh, being conscious of environmental causes, um, like how I, I think how social mm. reactions may occur. From, and then governance, I'm not exactly sure. There, there's more. Uh, nice, nice job, I, but I, I hope you did a lot of that. The. Um, uh, the, the key here is that understand that it's a guideline and if you m visit it periodically is but it's very dynamic yeah. and, and, and things can break or fall or something a storm can come through or whatever just understand that the flexibility you got to have the guideline is good to try to keep it stay that course but many times you have to alter it and just kind of be ready for that so you always want to put some money aside to, to do that but, uh, <laughs> but the, the actual structure and the guideline and focus is wonderful to have that goal in mind 
just understand you got to be able to make the decisions. What gets bumped if, when you list your priorities? What is the first thing to get bumped? And what is a must do priority? And it changes monthly, weekly, mm -hmm. annually. So nice job. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Scott. I appreciate it. A lot of good points here. And uh, the chief, one of the chief points is establishing a you know, capital improvement committee and, and to help implement some of the ideas that uh, uh, you've identified in, in your presentation. So thank you. You're off to a good start in the world of finance. Yeah. Thanks. You have a good mentor sitting next to so you. So how would we have the town building committee interact with this? You're asking me? Yeah. You're asking me? I am. <laughs> uh, well, no, it's, you know, I, we have to start looking at some of these committees that we, uh, that have kind of been put to rest and, and try to uh, bring back the ones that uh, uh, maybe, uh, you know, should have remained active and try to integrate them so that they talk to each other. And, so this is something that uh, we really need to look at down the road. I agree. I think this has been a shortfall because in the past, the town building committee has only really shifted into action after a project has been improved, rather than right. being Before. consulted in the early phases yeah. mm -hmm. for their input on feasibility. And their input has been informal, but I think um, that should be more formalized as to the relationship between the two. Well, the, the bigger, yes, I agree, but, but the bigger picture, and you know, uh, and having just gone through this whole budget process, um, the need for strategic planning is so critical. Uh, even this isn't a huge corporation, but even you know we still you know you, you, when you have a ninety million dollars you're, you're you're dealing with, um, you have to have strategic planning, and I think this is something that we really need to work on. And of course, that would be a piece of it, and would really uh, help to improve our viability down the road. So you really raised some interesting points, and uh, thank you, Scott. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. So I have one quick oh, yeah. question. Um, I think this is more for Roseanne. Um, it said that we previously had a capital improvement committee. Yes. Do you remember how long ago that was, or by any chance? I do not. Uh, it wasn't, it, it was uh, sort of as needed okay. as opposed to a regular set meeting time. And, okay. But that might be a starting place for us. And well, that's what there, I was wondering, And then yeah. if there are still some members of that, uh, committee, then those are people that I think we should hear from and get their input. I mean, I just don't know if you want to go back and reinvent the wheel if we've already done something like this years ago. That was my take on. Uh, just to uh, Roseanne's point, uh, the municipal building committee. We went back and read their bylaws and the ordinance. And okay. It, it's it's like one paragraph. Because mm -hmm. um, I was kind of saying, okay, well, why don't we just take that and revamp it a little? Yeah. Um, but their their you know direction or you know their bylaws. Um, mm -hmm. They receive. They, they work on projects as directed by the board right. select. Mm. So unless you guys direct them to oversee a project, it falls on you know whatever department to do it. Yeah. Kind of does it. Right? Okay. So they really were not empowered the way they should have been to yeah. have initial input as projects began. Yeah. Well, they so. get involved later in the game. Yes. Then, and then yeah. perhaps they should. So. Yours. Just for those at home. I think you had to be closer. That's all. Okay. Any, uh, any additional comments? I was just curious about what next steps would be. You take this research and it becomes part of our agenda later on. Yeah, I, I think it's something we need. Let's put it, make, make it an agenda item. Let's talk about it. And let's see what committees, uh, we can't do it all at once, but let's try to figure out what committee should come first, and then let's do it incrementally and really try to formulate what essentially is a strategic plan as we move forward. Well, you would create the charge, right, as far as what they're supposed to be doing, right? And then you're looking for yeah. how many people to be on that committee, right? Mm -hmm. right? You don't want too, too many. Uh, so from my research, a lot, a, lot of, a lot of my research was in, um, on other surrounding towns mm -hmm. and the makeup of their capital improvement committees that they had them, mm -hmm. and they were all very different. A lot of them contained members of the Board of Finance, Board of Education, mm -hmm. and Board of Selectmen, mm -hmm. maybe a couple from each or maybe multiple from each. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it was even citizens that were mm -hmm. part of the committee, uh, really like a, wide, a wide makeup. Okay. Good to know. We have all that research. Yeah. 
Yeah. I think this is dead. Thank you so much, Scott. Okay. Did you have a, a, was there a number, like a general number? Was um, at most that I saw on one committee, the average of, the average was about seven. Mm -hmm. I thought, well, yeah. Most okay. Was like the seven to ten. Usually seven is a good mix, to be yeah, honest with you, because if, when thinking. you get past ten or something of that nature, it can become, um, you're running around in circles, mm -hmm. depending. Yeah, you wanted an odd number. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, it's really food for thought, and having come through the budget season almost, um, <laughs> really points out you know, to the need to start thinking earlier on and not just when we're hitting the at the very end, we're looking at capital plan and, and where we're going to spend dollars and where we're not. And it would be nice to have uh, more input and thought put into that rather than scrambling at the end. So um, I know we're, this is totally dead. I know, um, just so I can hear me. Where, where's the other one? Uh, we never, that got broken a year ago. Um, yeah, I can definitely hear it different over here. Yeah. Um, so, um, I know this is, we're in May, we're still dealing with the current fiscal 25 budget, but um, we start budgeting, and the Board of Ed starts budgeting even earlier than us, but on the town side, we start budgeting in December, so ideally, this capital committee, if we could have, you know, uh, gun-ho by, you know, September, and give them a couple months to formulate the, you know, the proposed capital uh, package to, uh, you know, the first selectman during his budget, that way it's, it's, it's already it's already been discussed and kind of whittled down to a recommended package while we get into budget season. Mm -hmm. um, it would just kind of smooth things out a little bit. So I, I can't agree with that more. Yeah. I know for myself, coming out of this new this past budget season, mm -hmm. you heard it my, coming, coming from me that having the capital improvement plan in front of us was absolutely overwhelming. Mm -hmm. There was so many different projects on there and to delineate which ones were actual needs, what could be put off maybe a couple of years, or what have you. We just didn't have the time to do something mm -hmm. of that nature, but it's a lot of money and yeah. we want to do things the right way. Uh, yeah. So establishing a capital improvement plan um, you know, committee is smart and it's proactive. And I agree. I'd like to see that happen, yeah. mm -hmm. just like we're saying. Yeah. That'll be uh, something we try to start working on. Mm -hmm. Thank you again. All right. Next on our agenda is a special appropriation. CNRE, you have that motion? Move to approve a special appropriation in the amount of $6,796.48 from CNRE Fund 32, account 32-08-800-805 to purchase the listed equipment and forward to the Board of Finance for approval. All right. Anyone more? I'll second. Oh, oh um, Jerry. Jerry, can we get one more? Okay. So we have a second? Okay, good. Thank you. It's got you that upset, huh? Okay. I apologize. Uh, Jerry Locken from uh, Parks and Rec. And I, I as I, um, I, I handed everybody out a, a, a copy. The, the number on the actual one that I sent in earlier to, that I emailed into the uh, first selectman had an incorrect number on it. So this, uh, the numbers match, the total at the top matches the total at the bottom on, on the copy that I just handed out. So again, I apologize. The total amount uh, was $7,996.48. So we want to amend our, uh, mm -hmm. our motion? Yeah, so yep. I'll amend the motion to approve a special appropriation in the amount of $7,996.48 from the CNRE Fund 32 account to purchase the listed equipment afford to the Board of Finance for approval. Oh, we have a second? I'll second. Oh, we have a second. Okay. Okay, so, yes, thank you. Um, so what, what this uh, relates to is uh, we had some excess equipment in the uh, Parks and Rec operation that reached the end of its useful life with our department. Uh, we sold th those pieces of equipment at auction on a, on a public auction website. Those funds uh, were returned to the town and uh, the request is for to use those funds to replace some uh, additional equipment in Parks and Rec that's necessary for our ongoing operations. So it, that, that in a nutshell, the, the funds are already in the uh, available and in the, in the fund and we're just hoping to 
uh, use them to, like I say, uh, enhance and, and replace equipment that's necessary for our operation. So in these items uh, that we see for requested, these items are uh, all replacement of existing equipment? Um, I would say not, not entirely. And, and I guess the ones that wouldn't be, uh, I guess the word I would use is enhancements. Um, for example, the, the pickup liner, the bed liners for pickups. Um, as you know, Parks and Rec hauls a bunch of equipment around in our beds of our truck. If they don't have liners in, they get scratched and the, the vehicles actually end up wearing more quickly. So that's kind of a, a protection of, a, a, of an asset. So it's not really a replacement, it's a more of an enhancement that will protect an asset. Um, an automatic light controller, for example, is, is also an enhancement. We already have light controls, but an automatic light controller would allow us to um, program that remotely, saving time and making us a more efficient operation, resulting in better service to the sport leagues and things like that. So not all of it is replacement. Things that are um, like backpack blowers, those types of things are replacements. So, yeah, so I'm just confused. On the bed liner for pickup, it says 600, then it says 1,200. So is the amount? Two. Yep, there's, there's two bed liners. The, the first column there is the number two bed liners. Um, for oh, $600. it's $600. Yeah. Okay, I got it now. All right. Yeah, we, I was confused. Though. Thank you. We, uh, on this commission, uh, previously approved the bed liner. This mm -hmm. is separate from these two, correct? When you say committed part of recognition? No, sorry, uh, this board. We, we approved a bed liner for Parks and Rec previously. Mm -hmm. and I was In the capital improvement plan, you mean? Yes. Did that go through? I'm not entirely sure. No, I, didn't no, I think I remember a better line there, actually. Or yes. maybe they were just um, talking about capital it. Capital projects have to be 5000 or more. It might not have been capital projects, but we did good. approve a bed liner to save it on an older truck. Yeah, we we did we did have a request uh, several months ago, but it, it, it never went through the whole process, and, and we just... I think this is an enhancement of that. Well, this, that is a part of this this request. So I guess it's perhaps it's a identifying the particular funding mechanism that we're going to use to purchase that that bed liner or those two bed liners i believe was that through public works so or was it through park and rec the bed liner i thought i thought it i kind of remember it was joe i thought, I thought yeah we joe. did I we did several joe. months ago we did have a, a request yeah. for the bed liners uh that that may have gone through the uh the board of yeah. selectmen but it it didn't it didn't uh it didn't get finalized okay got it <laughs> Thank you. Do you have one source for all the lawn equipment? Um, no, um, but I, I do know that, um, let's see, the, um, certainly the, um, the skag and the push mower, I believe, if you're talking about strictly mowing stuff, that is likely from advanced power equipment up on uh, Route 1. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good job. And are, are these set prices? Or are these yes, these are these are prices that uh, vendors have committed to. Okay, okay. great. Is, is there something that you sold off that you're not replacing anywhere that's going to leave you in a bind that you don't have a particular piece of equipment? Um, no, the, the pieces of equipment that we, we sold up on top there, those are um, all pieces of equipment that, like I said, uh, have reached the end of their useful life. For example, uh, you know, the, the first item, a zero turn mower, that was replaced within the last year. So, you know, the old one that was kind of rickety, that's, that was not quite able to do the job, it, I guess it was worth $1,500 to, to somebody on the public auction site. Yep. So that, we've already replaced that. Gotcha. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any, uh, any further discussion on this item? I was going to look back through the minutes, but I think it's kind of a pointless exercise. Okay. So if there's not any further discussion, let's uh, move it. Uh, anyone, uh, let's see, those in favor uh, of approving, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. Thank you, Jerry. Yeah. Next, we have another appropriation. All right. Um, 
Move to approve a special appropriation in the amount of 157000 to the fiscal year 23, should be 24, um, Highway Road Reconstruction Account 01-30-317-200-224 to offset utility pavement restoration costs and forward to the Board of Finance for approval. Note, this requires a town meeting. We have a second. We have a second. Yeah. So, didn't we have some discussion of this previously as well? I think this during uh, Joe Gras' presentation, maybe. He might have mentioned it, um, but there is uh, there is a summary of the agenda item. Um, I can read it if you'd like, so everyone's aware of it. So, uh, the summary of the item is that a few years ago. Eversource extended the gas main from the middle school area uh, over to the prisons. By doing this, they had to dig a continuous 9,000 foot long trench along the way across Society, Riverview, and Roxbury Roads. The town Engineering Department re required Eversource to get a right of way permit for this work and made them responsible for the permanent pavement restoration. After the temporary pavement restoration, the department negotiated with Eversource to release them from the responsibility in exchange for a payment in lieu of restoration so the town could do the work uh, when we we're uh, planning on doing the rest of the roads. Uh, it took another year to reschedule the work, but finally the work was done in the summer of 23, and we used the funds out of our regular road work budget to, to uh, pay for it. At this point, uh, they're looking for the board to make a special appropriation into the highway, department road, reconstruction, uh, fiscal year 23-24 account to offset uh, those costs of the restoration work. So. We had a promise from Eversource. We did the work. We gave them a release, and they gave us the money. Roseanne, no. what I think you're referring to is uh, Joe was making his presentation as the ongoing repair and what type of asphalt he was using versus mm. another, yeah, another type of asphalt, one that would last longer. Longer. That's right. Rubberized. That's correct. Uh, yeah. So, um, so it's worked out well for the town, and now we're just looking to uh, move uh, the money. Into the area, to, into the road reconstruction account. Does that clarify it for everyone? I have a question. Yeah. So it makes mention of the 23 to 24 account. Does that account still exist, or does that kind of? That's the year. That's the post year. <laughs> Get today. Um, so we're currently at fiscal year 24. Um, so we're moving the money into this year's uh, budget line. Is that the was that the question? I just wanted to make sure we weren't taking money out of an account that no longer was serviceable. No. So this um, this hundred fifty seven thousand dollars is currently sitting on our balance sheet um, as uh, deferred revenue uh, because we, we took the money in two years ago. We didn't do the work, so we didn't recognize it. Um, so this year we did the work. So now we're looking to move that money down from the balance sheet into the the P and L the income statement. We received the money from EverSource. Yeah. We did. Yeah, we received this money uh, two years ago. Okay. And whatever action this board takes, that has to go to a town meeting for approval, right? Correct. Yes, correct. Any additional comments or questions, clarifications? If not, then uh, those in favor of the special appropriation signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? None. Motion carries. Next, we have departmental budget transfers. Hmm? Since we're going to table this. Oh, we're going to table it? Okay. All right, we're going to table that. Okay, the next uh, item, item E, is a discussion of possible action uh, appointment town moderator. Move to appoint Mark Salerno of 8 Bob White Lane, East Lyme, as a town moderator for the town of East Lyme with a term to expire on May 1st, 2026. Do I hear a second? I'll, I'll second, second it. <laughs> okay. We have a second. Uh, any discussion? Uh, I will say that uh, uh, Eugene Cushman has uh, retired uh, from the position. And uh, Mark uh, Salerno was always the backup and uh, the alternate. Uh, and he has experience uh, in that role, and he's expressed an interest in, uh, in doing it on a regular basis. So um, 
I think you'd be an excellent choice. Yeah. He'll do a great job. What's the job definition? What, do they, what I don't know the moderator does. So when we have a, a, a public hearing to nice. start the meeting, Got it. just to say what the uh, the issue is and catch the Pledge of Allegiance and uh, Thank you. You know, kind of moderate yeah. the uh, Robert's Rules uh, uh, proceedings. Yeah. Okay, so unless there's any further discussion, uh, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Being none, motion carries. Okay, so before, before we move on, should we now be looking at uh, a second, an assistant? Yeah, I think we have to take our one and figure out who that ought to be. Yeah. 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 We'll, we'll deal with that on another day. But at least we have someone in place now. We have a couple of meetings coming up, so. Mm. Okay. All right, move to appoint John Vilcek of 4 Meadow Street, Niantic, as an alternate member of the Inland Wetlands Agency for the Town of East Lyme with a term to expire on January 5th, 2026. Okay. Second. We have a second. Mm -hmm. We have, a, and I think if John is here, would you like to say anything, or? I'll step up. Just, just mm -hmm. introduce yourself, perhaps? I, uh, I wasn't prepared to speak, but uh, my, cam my comments would be, uh, I've lived in town for 48 years, raised my children. They all went to high school. One still lives here, another in Groton, and another in Massachusetts. Uh, the town has done well by me, uh, and I think it's time in my retirement years to do something for the town. And I would like very much to participate in town affairs. Great. And that's about it. Thank you. I appreciate you uh, volunteering your service. Thank you. Thank you. Right. So, any further discussion? All right, being none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any, anyone abstaining? Being none, motion carries. And congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Okay, let's see. Right. Item G, the one that we uh, added. Yep. Move to approve a special appropriation in the amount of $6,431.46 from revenue account 28-00-000-001 ACO donations to account 28-01-000-000-010 ACO uniforms and sent to the Board of Finance for approval. All right, so everyone has in front of them an invoice. What's that? I don't think we have a second. Oh, I'm sorry. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Thank you. Jason, thank you. All right, Fine. now I'll start. All righty. Um, okay, so you have in front of you um, an invoice from Capital Uniform and Supply for about $3,000. Um, that was the initial request. After looking at the uh, animal control officer donations accounts, the last three years, in 2022, they received just under $1,500. 23 last year, they received about $4,200. Year to date, uh, $743, adding up to the $6,400 that is in front of you tonight. The reason why we're appropriating more than this invoice, I think, um, so now we have that grant fund, right? Even though this isn't a grant, this is something where people are donating money to the town for a specific purpose. So we're going to put it in the grant fund because there's no other home for this money, really. Um, and the reason why we're appropriating the 6400 that's what is available to spend. So every year we'll come before the board, and whatever's money's left over and whatever money's been added, you know, additional donations, we'll reappropriate for the board. Unless, you, you know, you have another option, but um, I think that was spelled out in the grant um, grant ordinance, I believe. Um, so we're looking to appropriate the 6400 Of that 6400 3100 is already encumbered, so to speak, or, or spoken for. Okay. So. And then what account is this going to go into? Is so this a grant fund? The, this will be a grant fund account. Uh, so when you yep. see 28, 28 is a grant fund. Yep. Um, so, and you'll get quarterly reports. And if we need uniforms that. in the future for KCO, we would be able to draw it out of, out of that account or no? So... Um, with work? this particular funding, right, I, I think a, an edict has to come from the chief to me saying, hey, he'd like to spend this money for this purpose, yeah. right? Um, but it's for, um, you know, people donate to the ACO. So for this particular thing, I believe it is um, body, um, 
what's it called? Um, body, armor. body armor. Body armor. Body armor. I was thinking of the word. Um, but uh, so for this particular, they're buying the body armor okay. for the two animal control officers. But in the future, it could be you know whatever they need to operate their animal right. control facility and you know supplies and yeah, things like that. Those funds for them, and then when, when they need something, they would come. From Correct. Board. Yep. So they're going to spend this thirty thirty one hundred. Right. They'll have about thirty three hundred left. Um, to spend on you know other supplies and it's not if if they don't spend it they lose it they just keep it and it keeps rolling right right so there's a you know that's nice because now they're there's they don't have a um an incentive to spend it they have an incentive to kind of build, let it build until right. they you know they want to buy something right yeah right. So, so if this is three thousand one hundred four correct is, is the six thousand number still right then I, I correct yep so if we appropriate the six thousand that'll mm -hmm. prevent them from having to go back every time they want to spend okay. you know a hundred bucks or even a dollar or a penny okay. right because okay. so it just kind of gives them a little like a blanket approval to hey you brought in six thousand we'll let you spend okay. that six thousand on whatever you and know, this is, is the total your... amount of the donations that we have to correct date to date they... uh as of april 3rd okay so that's when i ran this report if Perfect. they received anything between april 3rd and may 1st we did not account for that, but it'll we'll account for it at the year-end uh, closing. And that goes in the animal control fund. That's not general police fund, right? Grant fund. Grant, right? right. There's no uh, animal control don't have their own fund. Doesn't have their own fund. The police don't have their own fund. They're both in the general fund, right? Whereas like uh, Park and Rec has a special revenue fund. Mm -hmm. uh, police don't have a special revenue fund. Um, nobody but Park and Rec has a special revenue fund, with mm -hmm. the exception of Commission on Aging, who's in the park and rec fund but whatever um but but that you know the board of ed does their own thing but um but no other departments like the police don't have a little a little fund like this thank you right. so if you got additional funds say in the next few months would you come back for us and ask them that it be unless um so the budget will be 6400 for them to spend right and the way our accounting system it locks you from spending any more than what's budgeted okay. so their budget is what you will appropriate mm -hmm. you know knock on wood um, but uh, so it locks them to that if they want to spend a penny more they have to contact someone in my office and that triggers the approval process again got it okay thank right. you thank you Tom. thanks for the explanation yep. any further discussion none and those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed any none the motion carries <coughs> All right. Move to authorize the first selectman in the name and on behalf of the town to execute and deliver a grant agreement with the Community Foundation of Eastern Connecticut for $15,000 and to do all things necessary to effectuate said grant agreement and send to the Board of Finance for approval. Note, this requires a town meeting. We have a second. Thank you. All right. So I need authority uh, on the purchase and working on this grant, and uh, she'll need my ability to sign the documents. Can you explain how? I, I talked to all the department heads, so I can uh, speak to this if you'd like. Yes. Um, so uh, Anna Perch, the curator at Brookside uh, Farm Museum, I believe it official mm -hmm. title, yes. um, applied for a grant um, at the Community Foundation of Eastern Connecticut to create a, um, I think it's called a national park, a 40 acre park, essentially, within the, the property of Brookside Farm. So she received $15,000. You'll know um, the town has two uh, approval, you know, uh, workflow, so to speak, for grants. This is going the full gambit. Um, in conversations with the town attorney, um, we thought uh, 15000 to build the 40 acres, or, you know, kind of uh, renovate the 40 acres and get that up to speed. There could be a potential in the future for a budgetary impact. So because there's a potential for that, right, that's what triggers the full approval process as opposed to that express approval process for grants. So this has to go to a town meeting, board of finance approval, and the, the whole shebang, right? As opposed to if it didn't have a financial impact, if the if the our t attorney said uh, rendered an opinion that this didn't have a, fisc a financial impact once you voted on it that would have been the end of that but it has to go through the full gambit so this goes the full route has to go the full route okay. so um, and this is to convert 40 acres you know 
Um, I don't know the extent fully, uh, but it's to uh, bring in some contractors, have some uh, supplies for volunteers to help out and get this uh, this vision uh, going. The financial liability you were speaking of earlier, would that fall to Parks and Rec for maintenance and kind of budgetary impact? I, um, I don't want to speak for Jerry, but I know there's a, um, they do maintain it when they have time, right? I think they get um, a request to go over there and help out, but I do not, I'm not 100% sure if it's in their regular rotation or not. Maybe Mrs. Hardy would know. No, it's not. Uh, I figured do, it's quarterly or kind they of do like. as needed. If there's an emergency, a tree comes down or something, mm -hmm. then they come over and take care of that. But um, no, it's not. It's not as organized as it should be okay. for routine maintenance. Yep. So this is probably something that we're going to need to uh, bring up again generally yes. uh, for these historic properties. What yeah. is the town's role in this right. and what should be done um, in order to make certain that our um, assets, particularly historical assets, are well cared for? Roseanne's correct for sure. I. I would like to just summarize really quickly. The project summary, so just help me with this, it says the Brookside Farm Museum has joined the homegrown national park movement. This is a grassroots call to action to regenerate biodiversity in our community. So what exactly will be happening here? I could respond to that unless somebody who's ex officio to that wishes to. You go ahead. All right. So this would be to uh, perhaps work in cooperation in cooperation with um, um, I can't think of her name. That does the uh, yeah pollinator pathways? Oh, yes. mm -hmm. To involve yeah. them to yeah. bring in some appropriate plantings for that to to add to that and an attempt to sort of broaden their um, uh, their their contacts with people to get people in, including some ideas to bring in a couple of uh, state biologists or to advise on appropriate plantings and also historic plantings for the time period, what would have been there. And okay. probably nobody else here remembers when it actually was a farm. And uh, they did have animals there and they also <laughs> had, uh, they also had vegetable farming. Okay. And, uh, you know, this, this property, which we know is Brookside Farm, all that property for the farm is now where the middle school is, where the industrial park is. Uh, that was all part of the historic properties. Okay. okay. So, thank you, Roseanne. Any other uh, comments or observations? Almost. <laughs> I just I just needed a tissue. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. All right then. Uh, unless there's further discussion, I'll ask. Uh, I'll call the motion. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> Being none, uh, the motion carries. I think that does it for new business, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Next, we return to. Mm -hmm. It's an efficient meeting. Uh, yeah, I try to run that. I'd like to just add one more thing to this the importance of us expanding um, people, like interns, to help these commissions access many of these grants that we're, we are passing up mm -hmm. that are available, and often many of them without requiring matching funds. And this is another example, um, along with, I think, the library intern that's been hired, uh, that has more than paid for the small amount of money that we're putting forth uh, to bring in grant monies. You know, I think that's an area that we really could focus on. Uh, just like we were talking about earlier, having, you know, capital improvement committee, commission, uh, to look at some of uh, uh, planning uh, and, uh, and this kind of falls in, in that same area if we could be more diligent and organized and, and looking for these grants and then uh, assigning and tasking somebody uh, to actually uh, take all the steps necessary 
I, I think we could really improve, the, you know, our, our situation here you know, with these historic properties. If we can uh, get grant money, it's out there. I think we we just have to find it. So no, I, I agree with that. Okay. Here we go. And now we're going to talk about the uh, status of the Cheney fishing dock, please. Good news. Uh -oh. um, <laughs> I'll ask uh, our administrator, will you take an electronic copy signature for our lease? I'm sorry? Would you take an electronic copy of a... They can scan it. So yeah. You yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I got the lease, the lease one and two done today. Well, finally signed yesterday and they sent it over today after they reviewed it they agreed to the price increases they appreciate the uh, three-year term with a five percent increase per year based on margin not markup um, i've got uh, blackhawk doesn't renew till december the end of this year i'm trying to get them on the same schedule and the other boat i will address that but my, my biggest hurdle was worrying about getting revenue from the second slip um, and so we did, and that, that's good <coughs> for you. And uh, it, it went really well, the good people too. Um, they, they had a couple requests, and I think it's got to be addressed, one's got to be addressed immediately, is the, uh, the head arrangement down there. Uh, they didn't ask for anything, no, no argument, no, no negotiating, whatever. They thought it was very fair and appreciated us working with them. Uh, good one-on-one -on -one communications with everybody. The, but they, they, they need the bathroom facilities. And not only they, but the people that walk on the boardwalk that enter from that end, there's one porta john And they clean it up on Thursday. We clean bathrooms twice a day, you know, at our place. We don't have the traffic, they do. And they, they're actually sending me pictures of it, which I don't need any more pictures of that. But, but however, um, I got a little resistance. Well, it's not in the budget. And so we need to prioritize, why can't I? And, uh, but it, for the people that walk on the boardwalk, mostly, because there's no fishing going on during the months, but these guys help clean them up. The traders were supposed to be down there last week. I think they are, but it was maybe after the, the 5K. But they're cleaned by the fishing dogs. It's mostly Blackhawk. The owner and then his wife or daughter clean the other one, that wife, daughter, clean the other one. And even though we hit them, they check them daily for the people that come there. And so the other request was, I don't know where water is, down there, they don't have fresh water. And that becomes a, a, a safety, I mean, a health and cleaning issue. Mm -hmm. When we had the water shortage, not the last one, but the one before on our dock, they told us we couldn't use the water to clean the boats. I said that becomes a health and safety. Because mm -hmm. that when Paul was just like when I said, then Paul, then you got to shut down your restaurant and you can't wash dishes. Mm -hmm. It's saying about the same thing. Mm -hmm. He was like, gotcha. Just try to have them limit the best they can. And it's, But anyway, there's no fresh water down there. Right, I understand that. And so, if we did that, how would we meter it? First, where's the, where's the connection? There's a lot to it. Okay, I, I, I don't doubt that. The infrastructure yeah. would probably be quite expensive. Yeah. But it is a health and, health and safety issue. And, uh, and, and then how do we charge for it? I think it'd be amicable to the proportion to the rent, because the smaller boats pay about one-third of the rent the Blackhawk pays. So Blackhawk's going to use most of the water to clean it. Uh, so, Anyway, just something to think about that, but the restrooms yeah. have got to be addressed. Uh, or the port of john or higher service coming daily. Uh, and apparently we don't clean them, just the service does. And so... Uh, All right, we'll look into that and then and I, and I'll re-examine that water issue. I know we looked at it before once. And it, it, it I know it's a reach where you, from where the closest well, water source is. Uh, yeah. So, Don, just kind of thinking about this overarching, it sounds like... Um, this might be a long-term goal, but we might want to think about the development of that particular part of town to be kind of a quasi-community and, and business space. You know, it's got the boardwalk there. It's got these these three independent businesses operating. It sounds like we we should invest in this in this space for the betterment of the town, the betterment of the economy. Is that what's something you would agree with? Well, without question. The day you did the tour with me, we went down there and looked at the boats and stuff. You saw all the open area down there. You could put some picking cables or whatever. Just put them there. Uh, let, put up times what time the boats are going to come back in so people can see the catches. Mm -hmm. That will create a bit of a fever in itself. You know, mm -hmm. oh, I'm going to do that. It's easy to do it. you got to do it. 
um, and, and, and make that like a landing spot there for the other end of the boardwalk. I think it's a great idea. I think there's great opportunity down in that area that has mm -hmm. been overlooked. And sure. I think there's something we really, uh, one of the things we have to put on our plate here to look at and, and to explore and to discuss and really have, uh, uh, you know, a, a line item in our in our agenda so we can really open it up and talk about it. And, and why that's so important, Dan, that's great. And thank you very much, Jason, for the brand, is that these guys are not getting younger. So we want to keep that a commercial fishing dock. And just have it roll over to the next people because we do not want to make it a, a, a public dock because it would be chaos. You know, to, to have that in our town, I mean, to be a town that actually has uh, a commercial dock, even though it's not huge, but that is a, that is a tremendous asset. And I don't think uh, not everybody's aware that it's down there and what we have, but I, I think there's an opportunity there uh, if, if we, you know, put our thinking caps on and really study it. Maybe there's something that we can do to, to enhance and improve uh, the vitality down there and uh, bring revenue to the town. I mean, a I lot of people still don't realize this is yeah. more charter boats leave this port than any other port in the state of Connecticut <laughs> because we're on top of the fish. Uh, Tartan does almost 400 trips a year. Wow. Yeah. So they do two a day sometimes. You know, so. Well, as long as we don't eliminate any of the parking spaces, i oh, good. You know, these are all things, but you know, we have to balance it and, and but I, I think that area has been largely ignored uh, for many years. And promotion has been self-promotion, right. Mm -hmm. right. Promotion has yeah. been self-promotion. And I, you know, we're looking for opportunities, we're, you know, we're, we're trying to budget this, balance this budget, we're looking for uh, how can the town get more revenue, and there might be an opportunity right there uh, if we uh, really study it and are careful uh, in our thinking that we might have a great opportunity that end of town. So let's, uh, let's, let's look at that down the road. And thank you for all your hard work on those yeah, fishing. It wasn't that bad. So. It's, uh, it'd be nice that, you know, once we get them on a three-year schedule, it's really going to take a lot of the, the work away from, you know, it's, you're not going to be doing this one or two every year. I think it's going to make them a lot easier down the road. Yep. So that, that was a good move. So mm -hmm. thank you, everybody on the committee, for, yep. for all your hard work. Um, Ex officio reports. Where do we want to start? Roseanne, you start at your end? I don't have a report this okay. evening. Okay. Yeah. Jason? Uh, just briefly, Stars to STEM, the nonprofit out of the planetarium, has started a spring series, which is going strong every Saturday. Um, and Brookside Farm Museum has a plant sale tomorrow and a spring tea coming up on the 19th and um, an actor, a Victorian lady, coming on June 2nd from 1 to 3. So a lot of really cool, exciting arts, culture, science programming happening around now. Okay, um, I attended a zoning meeting um, for, for Roseanne's ex officio on April 18th. And at that meeting, there, there was a, a request by attorney William Sweeney for a pre-application review of a potential development at 200 Pennsylvania Avenue, which is the, uh, the Trachis property. Um, so they want to make it an uh, area for 55 years or older, um, condos, and then they would do, you know, independent living and then move into assisted living and move into memory care. Um, they presented for about an hour and then they got feedback from the zoning commissioners. Um, and some of their issues were traffic because there's only one way in and out. Um, and the height of the buildings next to Dodge Pond. Um, the entire room was packed with people listening, the residents, so I was happy to see that. Um, also at that meeting, um, there was a, a vacancy and um, the board voted five to one and um, nominated uh, Debbie Jett Harris to uh, fill the vacancy. Um, additionally, I attended uh, the water and sewer um, meeting on April 23rd and um, the water department basically said that their water meter replacement project is, is uh, virtually done um, and they're going to be going to a quarterly um, billing system. So that's, that's my you. report. I have nothing to do. Okay. Thank you. Don? Tender Wells Grove. Okay. And let's see. 
I, I didn't have a police commission uh, meeting since the last meeting. Um, as some of you know, I, I did present uh, to the uh, Board of Finance at the uh, public hearing the other night. Um, and I thank your assistance, Kevin, on uh, uh, helping with PowerPoint. Appreciated that very much. Um, so that's uh, my expression. So now I do have my first selectman's report. I would note that uh, I don't know who knows, remembers Ben Bullock. Uh, yeah. yeah. Nice sure. man, and uh, he was very active at the historical uh, society in the uh, Sam Smith House. Uh, and he was responsible in, in, uh, for a lot of the effort and improvements at the Sam, Samuel Smith House. He passed away, and a good man. And I, when I was ex officio, uh, I enjoyed working with him. And uh, a, a sincere, uh, dedicated fellow who helped us out here in town. Um, I'm uh, aggravated uh, to report that uh, we suffered some vandalism at the uh, upper McCook's Park uh, bathrooms, um, and we have an event coming this uh, weekend to touch a truck, and uh, apparently there were uh, young, younger people who went in there and really tore the place up. Uh, you, know, you know, here we are trying to pinch pennies to balance the budget. And, um, someone goes in and does about $5,000 worth of damage. I did authorize uh, Jerry Loken uh, uh, to go ahead and make sure we get it fixed. I authorized him to spend the $5,000 for the repairs. Um, fortunately, they did have, uh, I think they had security cameras, so we'll see what comes of that. I was actually just going to ask. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to ask if that area. I think they've had. identified who the yeah. uh, mm -hmm. culprits yeah. are. So, yeah. you know. Public and. Yeah. Um, and do you want to talk about what we did today, or do you want me to talk about it? Oh, you can talk about it. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Yeah, yeah you are all right with that? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, so Ann and I attended a, uh, an emergency uh, scenario at the, uh, the EOC uh, Center, as part of the, which is part of the, in the police uh, public safety building. And uh, it, was, it was quite realistic. Uh, the scenario was that there was a, a terrorist event at Millstone. And um, there was some of the uh, people showed up and shooting the place up, and the plane went into it. And, and so we, uh, the scenario was we had to wait for our, our text message. And once we got our text message, we had the report that we'll be there in 10 minutes or 15 minutes. And then we showed up. And the minute we, we got on the floor, they identified both of us. You know, the CEO is on the floor. The, the this deputy is on the floor. And uh, it was very realistic. And it was. Uh, not just East Lyme, it was towns throughout the state of Connecticut, Coast Guard, and they were all in on this, and uh, um, it was uh, pretty dramatic. I gotta tell you, after after three or four hours of it, I was wiped out. Mm. It was yeah. exhausting. I mean, uh, you don't you don't know what you need to know. We had we had checklists and things I had to follow, and it was really engrossing, and I'm very thankful, and, and I wanna thank uh, you know, Julie Wilson and Mike Finkelstein, and, and they really uh, helped us uh, they put on a very realistic presentation, and God forbid we ever need to know how to do it. But and we were both saying afterwards, "Man, I'm glad we you know went through this." So you know what? You have some idea what to do. You know, unless you practice, you don't know. How nice is that command center, huh? Pardon? How nice is that command center? Oh my gosh! Yeah. Julie did that. I mean, that, yeah, it's, it's really nice. It's, it's, it's impressive. I mean, we should. And not everybody can go see it, but I mean, I got to tell you, I mean, it, it is an impressive. Uh, facility down there and it was really uh, quite realistic and uh, so yeah I'm glad we did it and so that was really I would say it was they fed us afterwards yeah that was uh, nice. you know so I'm all in I'm all in when they're gonna feed us afterwards so, but anyhow um, that's uh, that's what we did and uh, we really have really have a lot of great people that work for this town that are very dedicated and really really care about I guess what I noticed that it too is that everybody seems to, you know, be an expert in their field and really work well to, together and collaborate and talk. And that was really key was the communication. There's a so, lot of depth here. I don't think yeah. people appreciate just the depth of talent that we have on the people that work yeah. in this town. So I, I really just take this moment to thank them all. Yeah. Really. And, and the ability to protect the residents of the town, you, you can see it. it really, it's what they care about. We protect it. We're very fortunate. So, that's my report. I got to do that, and uh, thank you for everybody to put that on. Uh, do we have any uh, communications? I'm not aware of any. Is there any public comment? 
I just wanted to make one comment. Yeah. Um, we get received an email, I think, from Sandy. It's regarding the short-term rental committee. They're going to be giving a report to the Board of Selectmen on May 15th. I know it's pretty um, comprehensive, um, and I think they're going to be explaining it to us, but if everybody could just make a concerted effort to actually kind of get through some of it and, and try to understand it. They've been meeting for months, and um, it's it's a very complex issue. So I would just encourage everybody to just take some time and really, you know, read through some of that material. I thought that assignment was for tonight. We're going to make a presentation tonight. No, no May 15th, yeah. Amazing report, by the way. Oh, yeah, they did, they did an outstanding I mean, job. They really did. Yeah, that was Ann Santoro, I yeah, think, who did. Know. But yeah, everybody contributed. All, yeah. But it's a, yeah. First class. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no doubt. So. And there's tons of variables. There. And there's, oh, yeah, and that's why I think it's going to have a yeah. very, you know, this is just an initial, mm -hmm. you know, um, ask, conversation and, you know, discussion. If you could ask Gary one question, because everything seems to be hinging on that one case that's going to come up. Well, yeah, that's it what is. we're waiting for. Why? And, why? Well, oh. it depends. So we don't have to take it for ourselves. On the, no, but on the court case, it depends whether the judges, um, when they make the decision, if they do a broad holding, you know, and which will impact East Lyme and all the different towns, or whether they're going to do it very narrowly where it really won't impact us as much. Us as much. Now, well, what we don't want to do is make a decision mm -hmm. and then have the court case then, you know, invalidate whatever the Board of Selectmen decides to do. Right. So that's why we, we have, have to, to wait retract. for the case. Yeah. Right. I mean, essentially, it's setting precedents. Yeah, but it just case. depends how how Which the judges, yeah. yeah, and how narrow or broad their holding is. So, I, yeah, I found the reading pretty good. Like for example, and you know how I stand on it. But however, I understand too. I got to be realist that there's going to be something in place. We already have almost 200 people doing it. Mm -hmm. You know that we know it. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's going to be. But even though our, our town says no, we're not to have it. But, there's got to be some sort of meeting in the roads as long as it's regulated. But I'm anxious to hear what the, the Supreme Court, right? Yeah, you know, the Supreme Court, Court. Yeah. yeah. I don't think they've even argued it yet. But the report is really, really good. And I also appreciate the other towns, what each town is doing, too. So, yeah. So it's a good job. Yeah. Oh, it, it's a problem for all municipalities, particularly in, in the coastal areas. Mm. It's desirable to come for a few days or a week. So, yeah, we'll just have to keep tracking it and see what happens. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so we can all take a look at that and at least be informed for the next uh, meeting. Is there anything further? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. adjourn. Move to adjourn the May 1st, 2024 regular meeting of the Board of Selectmen at 8.03 p.m. You hear a second? A second. Thank you, Candace. All right. All in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? 